Hey everybody, today I wanna to talk to you about dust collection in your wood shop. I've got a bunch of tools here that make a lot of sawdust and I really don't like cleaning up after them when they make a huge mess all over the floor. You gotta sweep it all up or you've gotta use a shop vac and then it gets clogged and you ruin the filters and it just, it's a pain in the neck. So I've built this solution instead. This is based on something called a Thine Baffle. Maybe it's Thine Baffle. I'm not sure how to pronounce the gentleman's last name, but I'll leave a link to his website where he shares his designs and his plans for how to build this particular dust collection system. It does a fantastic job. I cannot believe how well it works to separate the dust into the garbage can and nothing gets into the shop vac. It's really unbelievable. They're easy to build, although if you're like me, you're going to make a bunch of mistakes along the way. I'll show you that process, show you where I tripped up, and show you how I fixed it. It's really easy to use and it was really inexpensive to build. Let's get right into it. Now for years I used this little shop vac and while it did a pretty good job, there was a couple of drawbacks. Uh, the filter inside here gets clogged really easily and it's hard to tell when the thing's actually full and doesn't really hold as much sawdust as you might think. In fact, here's a quick little clip where you can see I opened it up one day and I couldn't believe how full it was and you can see just how caked this filter is. It's completely jammed full of sawdust. It was barely moving any air at all and it didn't have any suction and it was just not a great solution. So I had to come up with something better. So for a few years now, I've been seeing people building these, um, these vortex separators that spin the air around and uh, use centrifugal force, I assumed, to uh, separate out the dust, let it fall down into a larger receptacle, and then clean air would go through to your shop vac. And that seemed like a great idea, but I couldn't find any that were economical to just buy that were also the right size. I could find some that were small that would fit on top of a little five gallon bucket, but that wasn't nearly large enough. My planer will fill up one of those buckets with just a couple of passes. So I needed something larger. And I stumbled across a website that I think is actually the guy who invented this idea. His last name I think is Thine or Thine. I'll leave a link to it down in the description so you can go check it out yourself. And in it, he has built a separator just like this and he explains the iterations he went through to get to his final design. There's also a forum there with lots of enthusiasts you can communicate with who can help you with your design if you're planning to build one of these. I found that website to be hugely helpful and I should have paid more attention to it in the beginning. You see, my first thought was to build the thing entirely inside the garbage can. Uh, and you'll see here in just a minute, that turned out to be kind of a mistake. So I wound up redoing it in what's called a top hat design. That's this final design. And before I get into exactly uh, the build process, I wanted to just show you kind of how it works. This end will suck up the air with all the sawdust or particles or whatever you're cleaning up. That will travel up this pipe and enter into this chamber right along one of the edges. There the air spins around at a very high rate of speed and all of the particles are forced to the outer edge and they spin right along this glass. Now even though they're spinning really hard along this glass, gravity takes over and starts to pull them down towards the can. And the ingenious thing that Mr. Thine did is he put what he calls a baffle on the bottom side of this that prevents the dust that's already gone down into the can from coming back up. So here's a little bit better shot of the underside of this top hat. You can see this slot that is cut about two thirds of the way around the perimeter of the top hat and that's what the dust falls through. Here's the port where the dust in the air comes in and spins around inside of that chamber and then the dust will fall down through that slot down into the garbage can below. It's a little hard to envision but let me show it to you in action. Let's take a quick peek inside before I make a lot of sawdust and see what these things look like before. So this I just recently emptied. There's only a little tiny bit down in there. And the shop back itself I know has quite a bit of some chunks of old sawdust that have kind of collected over the years. That stuff's stuck on there. So that's what we look like before. And uh, the after should look almost exactly the same. You can see the filter here it is really clean. There's almost nothing on it. So we'll make a bunch of sawdust and see what we get. So we're gonna start with my chop saw and unfortunately it's dust port is quite a bit smaller than this hose. So I've got this little adapter that just reduces down from the large bore to the smaller for that tool. And then you can see the other end of that just plugs right into the back of the saw.
Now to connect it to the planer, I don't need to have any kind of an adapter. The hose can go just straight onto the outlet port on the planer. And we're ready to go. Now the dust collection port on my planer does a really good job of collecting all of the sawdust and chips that are coming off the workpiece. And you can see it is spinning around at a high rate of speed inside that chamber at the top of the thine baffle. Now inevitably when I'm finished using the planer, there's going to be a little bit of sawdust that's collected that didn't get captured by the dust collection system. And since the filter in the shop vac is not getting clogged up, there's still plenty of suction to use it just like a regular vacuum to clean up anything that may be left over. Okay, so I just spent about 15 minutes doing some planing and this is the result. As you can see, this garbage can is about a third of the way full or so. There's an awful lot of sawdust in there. Okay, so now let's take a peek inside the shop vac. And it's empty. And as you can see, my filter is still super clean. There's almost no fine sawdust on it at all and there's no additional new sawdust, maybe some, just a little tiny bit of super fine on the, on the walls there. But by and large, there is nothing new in here. All the dust was collected in my garbage can right where I wanted it. As you can see, the Stein Baffle does a really great job, but it's not the first version that I built. Earlier in this video, I mentioned that I made a bunch of mistakes, and I wanna walk you through the first designs that I tried and show you why they didn't work and what I did to fix them. So my initial design was based around the idea of building a new lid for this garbage can with an exhaust port right in the center. Then I was gonna cut an inlet port on the side of the garbage can and dust would come into the can through that inlet port and spin around the edges and get knocked down to the bottom. And then the air that was pulling that dust in, now cleaned of all the dust, would just exit through the port in the lid. And I'll be completely honest, I didn't really think this through very well, and I thought it would be good enough, and I'm lazy, so I thought, I'll just try this. It's a simpler approach than what was suggested on the Thine website, and I figured it would do a good enough job. Now, I don't really want to show all of the detail of how I built it the wrong way, because frankly, it's not the best way to do it, and I wound up throwing away a lot of this work anyway. But there are a couple of areas that I had a novel approach to solving a specific problem during the build, and I will take the time to explain those. Starting with this part here, where I needed to cut this hole in the side of the can. All right, so I've got the inlet box mounted on the side of the can, just with one little screw to hold it there. And now I need to cut open this little section of the can here so that the air can flow through and start spinning around with, uh, without running into anything. So in thinking about how to mark this hole, I came up with the idea of shining a flashlight into the inlet hole, turning off the lights in the room, and then seeing if I can see the outline of where I need to mark that, and uh, then just trace that outline with a Sharpie. So I've got this headlamp that I'm gonna use. We'll go ahead and turn that on and put it into the inlet hole. Looks like it'll stay. We turn off some of these other lights and see what we get. Hey, that's perfect. Now I can just reach in there and trace it. Okay, so next I'm gonna grab my Dremel tool and use that to cut out this box. There's one other thing that's worth mentioning and that is you really want these to be airtight. So there's gonna be several areas like right here where you'll see I'm applying some silicone to the joints because you don't wanna lose any suction just because you didn't make a really tight fit with any of the construction. So. If you're planning to build one of these yourself, you will want to go get a couple of tubes of silicone because you're going to wind up using it to fill in gaps to make sure things are perfectly airtight. So here I am assembling this lid and putting in the outlet pipe. And of course, you got to remember the gloves so you don't get silicone all over your hands. Now some of you who may have built one of these in the past may notice that I put in a pipe here that's probably way too long. Though I really don't think it would have made much difference. There's other problems with this specific design that I don't think it would have mattered how long the pipe was. One other thing, I didn't want to make this permanently installed on the top of the can, so I used this little foam insulation that normally is used to fill gaps in doors to form a nice tight seal on the top mating surface of this lid when it was sitting in the can. 
Okay, there we go. My new lid is all built. And now I've got a shop vac and I've got a can with a funky lid and an input port. Let's see what we can suck up. But before I can do that, I've got to attach these together somehow. So I ordered this hose off of Amazon and I really like it because it's uh, really flexible and see-through. It will let me be able to see if there's ever any obstructions in my pipe. I also got these pipe clamps that are really easy to use because they've got these thumb screws built in that make it super simple to install them and remove them really easily. So getting this ready to use for the first time was a simple matter of cutting the hose to the length that I wanted and attaching it with those pipe clamps. So one of the first tests that I did was to turn on the vacuum and then cover up the inlet port on the dust collector and you can see the can is flexing and kind of collapsing on itself. That's going to be a problem down the road and I'll show you how I fixed that as well. But for now, let's just move forward and give this thing a try and see how well it works. So keep in mind, this is my first design that ultimately I wound up not using and you'll see why here in just a minute. But it's worth noting that this did have pretty good suction and did a nice job cleaning up this dust. All right, I sucked up that entire box of dust and near the end, I did see some small pieces that were starting to get through this hose. So I wonder just how full this can was. That was a lot of dust. That box is uh, actually quite a bit larger than it looks. So we'll look and see how much dust wound up in here and how much dust wound up in here. Okay, first in the dust extractor, it is quite full, but I also noticed that I've got a couple of problems with the sides having caved in a little bit. Okay, so I am gonna have to do something about these sides collapsing in. That will reduce the overall volume of dust I'm able to collect, and it will also decrease the efficiency of the vortex that I'm trying to form in here. Now let's see how much dust wound up in the shop vac. Okay, there is a surprisingly large amount of dust that wound its way into the shop vac. All right, so I have to admit I'm a little disappointed in the first test results. I figured it would do a little bit better job, but it turns out uh, one of the things I was mildly concerned about with this particular garbage can turns out to really be a problem. And that is, it's got these, uh, these molded in kind of ledges um, inside it. The air is coming in with a nice clean flow and then it comes around and as the air comes through, the dust is kind of falling and so it's, it's taking this trajectory where many of the chips are running right into this ledge here. And as a result, they are bouncing straight out and going across the can, hitting the flow again, and then just running into another one of these little ledges that is stuck there. Um, since these ledges are roughly in line with the bottom of my pipe, I've actually seen this on the video footage that I shot inside the can. The dust comes in, comes around this corner, hits off of this, goes shooting across and gets sucked right back up into my pipe. That's why I wound up with quite a bit more dust inside of my shop vac can than I expected. Now I've been known to be stubborn sometimes and I wasn't ready to throw in the towel on this design quite yet. So I spent a little bit of time trying some admittedly bad ideas to try and mitigate the uh, shape of this can to try and see if I could get the air to flow a little more smoothly and the, and the dust to not get knocked around and sucked up into my exhaust pipe so bad. But ultimately uh, it was obvious this was just never really gonna work. All right, well, back to the drawing board. So after some research, I decided to go ahead with a top hat design and I elected to use a big sheet of polycarbonate to form my chamber. And I picked this up at a local plastic supply company. I actually saved a lot of money over buying it at a Lowe's or a Home Depot or some other big box store. So if you're ever gonna do a project with some polycarbonate, a quick pro tip would be to you know call around, see if you've got a plastic supply company in your area who can hook you up with a, a great deal. Now I knew I wanted to reuse the lid that I'd already built because it was a really nice fit for the garbage can. It sealed really well but it had the problem of this big pipe in the center of it and that wasn't gonna work in the new top hat design. So I started by removing that, but that presented another problem. Let me explain. All right, so I've cut out this circle and sized it perfectly for my piece of polycarbonate. This is gonna become the top of my thine baffle. And this is the lid from my first attempt at making a cyclone and I would like for this to become the bottom of the thine baffle. The problem is I need to now cut a groove in the top of this lid that is exactly the same size as the diameter 
of the top that I've already cut so that the polycarbonate can sit down into that groove in the lid. But my circle cutting jig requires that I have a hole in the center that I can put a pin into from the jig and this hole is way too big. So the solution I've come up with for that is I cut a short piece of extra uh, PVC pipe here and I've got one of my off cuts from my circle um, from one of the other pieces of the lid that is a fairly snug fit. I'm going to put a couple of screws through the sides here to hold this center piece of wood and then this whole thing will slide quite snugly down into that hole. With any luck we'll get ourselves a perfect circle. No idea if this is going to work. Let's give it a shot. So remember how at the beginning of the video I told you I was going to show you all my mistakes? Well, that groove that I just described it turned out to be another mistake. This jig worked perfectly. It cut a perfect groove. It just turned out to be completely the wrong approach. So just so you know, the groove you're about to see me cut, I don't wind up using. All right, I think this little center insert I've made is going to work just fine. But I do want to make sure I take these screws out that are near the perimeter. Because I do not want a router bit to hit that. And as you can see here, that jig produced a perfect circle groove that I was thinking at this point I'd be able to put the polycarbonate down into, but I'd forgotten I was gonna be cutting out the slot for the baffle. And by doing that, I was gonna remove the surface that the polycarbonate was supposed to mate up against. And no amount of silicone was gonna seal this very well or be strong enough. So, as I mentioned, I actually wound up not using this groove at all. You'll see how I deal with that here in just a minute. Let's jump ahead to where I cut out the baffle. To cut out the slot for the baffle, I just used a Forstner bit in my drill to drill out both the beginning and the end point of the baffle slot. Then I scribed in a line for exactly how wide I wanted to cut that slot for the baffle and cut it out on my scroll saw. With the baffle slot finally cut out, I decided now was as good a time as any to deal with the great big hole that was in the center of my lid from where I had the pipe before. I just cut out a small piece of wood that was about the right size to cover it used a little silicone sealant and a few screws, and that took care of that. The material I'm using for this lid is not very forgiving with screws, so I went ahead and pre-drilled everywhere that I was gonna be putting a screw through the polycarbonate, and then I transferred those hole marks to the polycarbonate and also drilled pilot holes there. Polycarbonate's pretty brittle and it can tend to crack if you just try and put a screw straight through it. And finally, I cut the outlet hole in the top as well. Yeah, this is the moment I realized that groove was not going to work. All right, so I goofed up. And I want to show you how I goofed up and what I've done to fix it. Um, when I measured and cut this circle, I then used that same exact settings on my cur circle cutting jig to cut the groove that's going to be used for the uh, lower portion where the baffle actually is. And then I went and cut out this slot. The problem was my router has a quarter inch bit that I was using to cut this groove in the first place. You can see this is kind of how wide the groove is. And when I went to cut out the slot, I cut on the outside of the slot instead of the inside of the slot. And that meant that my slot was a quarter inch, well, all the way around the baffle anyhow, it's a quarter inch too large because the plexiglass here is gonna go against this edge of the groove, not that edge of the groove. And so by cutting the baffle out on the outside edge instead of the inside edge of the groove, I wound up making this diameter way too large and there was no way that the polycarbonate was gonna fit. So to fix this, I took this off cut back to my scroll saw and I cut off around the outside um, that quarter inch that was left over and I glued it up and I've stuck it back in here which will restore my diameter to be exactly what it's supposed to be so the polycarbonate will fit so I can finish building this baffle so I can get all the dust off the floor that I've been living with for weeks. Everybody clear now? All right, let it be known, I screwed up. On to the next thing. With that disaster taken care of, I could move on to the final assembly of this top hat. 
I sealed up the crack in the polycarbonate with a little piece of wood and some silicone sealant. Then next I applied another bead of silicone to what would become the top of the top hat design. And then I put screws all the way around the perimeter and sealed the interior with another bead of silicone as well. Up next it was time to install the exhaust pipe, so out comes more silicone. And I put a lot of silicone on this because that's actually all that's holding it in place, there's no other fasteners. Next it was time to tackle the inlet port, and similar to how I cut this on the garbage can, I first mocked up exactly where I wanted it to be, and then I cut out the hole with a rotary tool and got it cleaned up a little bit with the sanding disc as well. Final installation of this was much like the rest of it, lots of silicone, lots of screws, make sure there's no leaks. Now as I've been doing all of this assembly, I've been thinking about the problem I had with cutting that slot incorrectly and how was I going to mount this so that it would work properly and this is what I came up with. I fabricated a new ring that's going to fit down around the outside of the polycarbonate right at the bottom and this was going to act as a mating surface against the lid of the garbage can and this is going to kind of form the top hat design. This was installed and assembled in very much the same fashion as everything else. Pre-drilled, lots of silicone, seal up all the gaps, and this ultimately is the final design that worked perfectly well. Once this chamber was fully assembled, I attached it permanently to the baffle with some screws and some silicone. Alright, we're in the home stretch. There's just two more things to take care of. The first is this little hole that I'd already cut in the side of the garbage can. Obviously, I can't leave that the way that it is. I'm going to have to seal it up with something. And I thought, rather than try and seal it, why don't I make it into a window? I've got all this polycarbonate kicking around. So here I go again with some silicone and lots more screws. Though I should note, on this particular piece, instead of using wood screws or sheet metal screws, I use these little nuts and uh, machine screws so that I could fasten it and kind of squeeze it from both sides. And that worked perfectly well. Now sawdust does have a tendency with some static charge to kind of stick to this window and sometimes it's a little hard to see through but in general it's been really good. I can easily tell when the can gets full. And the last problem to deal with is the fact the can was being crushed by pressure. So I just grabbed a little piece of scrap wood and cut it into a ring the right size and pressure fit that down into the can and now it doesn't get crushed. And here again is my final design. Both the fine baffle and garbage can and the shop vac are on wheels, so they're super portable and easy to move around. The fine baffle itself is not very heavy and easily lifts right off the top of the garbage can, so it's really simple to empty the can when it's full. This thing is super convenient and works with all my power tools and does a great job collecting all of the dust that I produce. And so that's how I do dust collection in my workshop. I hope you've enjoyed this video and maybe even learned a little something along the way. If you've ever built one of these nine baffles or something similar to it, let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear how yours turned out and if yours is every bit as effective or even more so uh, than this one. In particular, I'd love to know if there's anything I can do to improve this design or make it easier or more efficient. I'm really struggling with where to store the hose. Anybody got any good ideas? Hit me up down in the comments, let me know. If you've liked this video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd let me know by hitting that thumbs up button down there. And if you'd like to see more videos like it, you can always think about subscribing, but there's no pressure there, of course. And as always, thank you very much for watching.